Hi guys, welcome to Bream Time. On this channel, I show you underwater footage of my bream and tench fishing sessions. Today, I'm doing something that I don't do that often. I actually move to another water. This is a downtown lake with a lot of bream, tench, and even some odd carp to that. And in addition to that, I'm trying something that I've wanted to try for a very long time. And that is that I bought a bait boat. Check this out. So this is how the bait boat works. You have one section here and one at the back. Here you can put some additional boilies, corn, ground bait, whatever you want. And here you put your hook bait. So what I do is I open this up, put the line here, lock it, like that and then I drive it into the lake and I can release these hatches and the bait and the extra ground bait goes exactly into the same spot. This is kind of a basic model. I have a remote control, I can release the hatches and the good thing about this model is that it, it's not that expensive actually. I paid about 300 euros for this model what this opens up is that I can go further out into the lake and further to the side. Let's check this out. Pushing the past again, no. You know my little triggers keep on triggering them all. I've had enough of this, oh. If you want to have a look at these bait boats, there's a link in the description. So this is what it looks like at about 4 meters depth, about 50 meters out into the lake. The bottom is still fairly hard. When I went even further, the bottom became much softer. So at a later stage, I decided to change to a wafter instead so that the boilie wouldn't sink. Here you can see a mixture of slightly bigger and slightly smaller bream. The first one in the corner here is fairly big for my standards, but there are also smaller ones. The advantage with using a 16mm boilie is that it sorts out some of the smaller fish. Here you can see a smaller bream picking up smaller particles, but leaving the 16mm behind. For that reason I always try to have some bigger things in the swim because otherwise the hook bait can be left behind. And one single hook bait quite often is just not enough to attract fish. Here you can see a mid-sized bream moving in and after that comes a bigger bream followed by another fairly big bream. A pattern that I see a lot of is that the fish are swimming around in eight, crossing the baited area, moving outside and then coming back. My expectation have always been that they stay in the baited area and eating as much as possible, but that's just not the case. They often swim around in circles, passing the baited area, getting out of it, coming back and picking up more. And after a couple of circles you can see here that one of the bigger bream picks up the hook bait and get caught. Something that was special about this fish was that it had no proper run. It just picked up the bait and then it was standing by the lead. So from the bank I had one beep, then silence for 45 seconds to a minute, and then another beep. 
but after about five minutes I decided to pick up the rod because um, something was obviously happening but I just didn't expect a nice fish like this one. But if the first run of the day could be described as gentle, my second run was totally brutal. Written down the words to say It is time I've been waiting five days To explain How you make me feel inside Baby Got it all figured out Wanna do this right There's no doubt in my mind Baby, you're the one And I The strategy on my second rod was the same. I was fishing a 16mm boilie and I had some corn and other particles together with some ground bait. The ground bait mainly for flavoring. The second rod I drove sideways because there was an area of water lilies about 50 meters away. Without the bait boat I could never reach this with a camera on the line. Here you can see the water lilies on the right hand side. The positioning here was quite unlucky. I had a stone covering the visibility and there's some kind of elevation. So we can't see the hook bait but uh, as you see here the fish were there right away. The bream showed up very quickly, they were there more or less immediately and but soon there were coming bigger and better fish. Here you can see a massive fish, I can't really tell how big it is but this is obviously not a bream or tench, this, this is obviously a carp coming back for a second time. I can I can't really say how big this is. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. And here the bream comes again. And in normal case this is a fine catch, but um, when you have a massive carp swimming around, that is what you want to catch. As soon as the bigger fish leaves the swim, the roach takes over and here you can see how anything small disappears quickly because the roach, they are just so many. Here a carp moves into the swim again and I presume that this is the same fish but um, I have to admit I'm not sure by any means. And as if that wasn't enough, a uh, tench joins the swim and now it's just a matter of who is coming first to the hook bait because something is going to be caught here. Here a bream moves in again but uh, a bream of this size, the 16 mm boilie, isn't a prioritized target but here you can see the carp again moving in. But it looks like that the carp doesn't really eat anything, it just swims around. But the tench isn't shy, it eats and having a good time. In comparison to bream, the tench is much easier to get into a feeding mode. And here the carp comes back, not eating but having a good look. So at this point we have a couple of bream swimming around, picking, probably picking up mainly particles. We have a tench and normally they are very keen on picking up boilies. So the tench is probably picking up both 
particles and boilies and a carp swimming around being slightly reluctant to pick up anything. There's very little hesitation from the bream and tench so at this point it's really a matter of one of them deciding to go for the hook bait. Here the tench goes for one of the three boilies, it gets nibbles slightly and reacts, but uh, unfortunately that wasn't the hook bait. But suddenly the carp have decided that it wants to eat and here goes the hook bait. This is a massive run and I have nothing to stop this fish. Neither my line nor my rod is strong enough for this. This fish is so much bigger than the bream and tench I normally catch. But I try to keep an even break. Here you can see the carp going into the water lilies and unfortunately this is where it happens. The line breaks and the carp is gone. It was the fluorocarbon letter that broke, which is between the camera and the lead, so at least I got to keep my camera. This was the best picture I could get out of the carp. I have no idea how big it is, but um, if you have an idea, feel free to comment below. Well, you just can't catch them all, can you? The main conclusion of all this nonetheless is that the bait boat was absolutely superb. It's a tool that I'm going to use for a lot of my fishing in the future. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.